Hello, this is a video on the three main properties from Algebra 2 uh, for logs. I'm going to review them with you and then we'll be using them in pre-calc. The first one is the product property for logs, log of some base b of the argument m times n is equal to or is the same as the log base b of m plus the log base b of n. Meaning, if the argument has multiplication, you may take the single log and break it up into two and add between the two logs. Now, I'm going to show some number examples and so you can see how this works. First off, if you look here, log base 2 of 4 times 16. Well, 4 times 16 is 64, so this problem is log base 2 of 64. How many twos does it take multiplying together to get 64? Well, one, or 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32, times 2 is 64. It took six twos multiplying together to get 64, which means log base 2 of 64 equals 6. Now, I did what this property up here says to do. Um, if you have multiplication in the argument, you could simply divide it up into two logs. Let's see if we get the same answer. Log base 2 of 4. How many 2's does it take multiplying together to get 4? Well, it takes 2. So this log expression right here is 2. Plus log base 2 of 16. How many 2's does it take multiplying together to get 16? 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, it takes 4. And you get 2 plus 4, you get the same answer. So you can see how that works. So again, if you have multiplication in the argument of a single log, you can write it as separate logs where you're adding them together. Okay, next one is... Quotient property for logs. This property says, and I hope you're writing these down so you have them as reference, log base b of m divided by n is the same as or equal to the log base b of m minus the log base b of n. So if you have an argument that has division in it, which normally is seen with a fraction. So if you have a fraction here for division, it becomes subtraction. So you have a single log with an argument with a fraction. You can write as two separate fractions with a minus sign. Let's see how that works. Okay, so you have log base 2 of 16 divided by 2. Well, 16 divided by 2 is 8. So log base 2 of 8, I'll jot that here for people who need it. How many 2's does it take multiplying together to get 8? 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. It took 3 of them. Let's see if I get 3 when I take that fraction and make it subtraction with 2 logs. Log base 2 of 16 is 4 minus log base 2 of 2. Remember when the base and the argument are the same it equals 1 because you're thinking 2 to what power gives you 2? That's 1. 4 minus 1, you're getting the same answer. So again, fraction, subtraction. Okay, let's do the last one. Last one is power property of logs. I think this is the one I probably use the most when I'm looking at like business models and interest problems. So this one is the log base b of an argument raised to a power. That's why it's called the power property. If you have an exponent or an argument, you may put it in the front. So it's like the exponent times whatever that log expression is. So I have an example here, and this is one that I would really like to use it for because I can't always do all this stuff in my head. So um, if I had a problem like this, if I had my choice of finding log base 7 of 49 raised to the third power, 
I don't know what 49 raised to the third power is. I'm going to have to use my calculator for that. I would much rather take the exponent and fly it to the front like I have right here. Why? Because log base 7, so log base 7 of 49, that right there is 2 because it takes two 7s multiplied together to give you 49. So it's simply 3 times 2 or 6. Otherwise, I would have to pull this guy out and go, okay, what is 49 to the third power? Oh my gosh, you get 117,649. How many sevens does it take multiplying together to get that? Well, seven times seven times seven. Well, what's three give me? Well, three of them gives me 343. Four of them gives me 2401. Five of them gives me 16,807. Finally, it takes six of them before I get to that. So again, that is a lot harder. This was pretty easy to do in my head. So again, if you have an exponent on an argument, you can easily fly it to the front and turn it into multiplication. Hope that helps review of the three main rules.